Let's take a look at how to write a radiology report. In this session, we will learn the definition, the structure of a report, ways of communication, and tips on how to put out a good report. A radiology report is a legal document that communicates between a radiologist and a referring doctor. It is a specialized interpretation of imaging findings to enable better understanding of the patient's current medical situation. Broadly, we can divide it into seven sections. One, demographics. Two, imaging parameters. Three, relevant clinical information. Four, findings and or observations. Five, comparison studies. Six, impression or summary. And seven, recommendations. Demographics include the name, age and gender of the patient, the patient's ID, the title of the imaging study, name of the referring doctor, name of the reporting doctor, the date of the study, and the date of the report, which may include the dictation as well as the transcription time. Next, we document the imaging parameters. How did we do the study? Did we give any medication? Was the study limited in some manner that could reflect on the outcome of the report? We briefly document the relevant clinical information, the current clinical problem that has brought this patient to imaging. Findings or observations form the body of the report. There are two ways to go about this. One is the structured approach where we have a checklist and we document every finding. And the other approach and the more common approach is the narrative approach where we give a description of the findings. This should be followed by documentation of any comparison studies. Are there any prior imaging? Is there any comparative interpretation that you would like to document? The terminal portion of the report constitutes the impression or the summary where you tell the outcome of your imaging. Is there a diagnosis or is there a list of differential diagnoses? Finally, you may add recommendations which may include further imaging or lab investigations that might confirm your diagnosis or differential diagnosis. There are different ways in which we can communicate a report. What we have described so far is the normal way of putting out a final document report. There are a couple of other ways in which we might need to put out reports. A preliminary report, an informal communication. Prelim reports are given when certain conditions warrant urgent patient management. They tend to be limited or incomplete in content. They could be given in written, electronic or verbal format and should always be documented. Informal communication can happen over the telephone or in person with the referring doctor when we discuss a report in a clinical conference, in multi-department meetings with the patient and the patient family. This should also be documented. Always keep in mind that the report is your identity. Keep it short and to the point. Speak in the present tense and try to reduce the technical terminologies that you use in a report. Many people always talk about avoiding certain terminologies in reports, which might just add to more confusion or uncertainty to the referring doctor. So here is a list of a few. Is seen, visualized, identified, as described above, as noted above, as stated above, not uncommon, not rare, evidence of no obvious, doubtful, suspected, no definite, Suspicious, vague, clinical correlation, equivocal, significant. At the end of the day, you need to put out something that is of value to the patient. Once you are fairly confident that you have a fair idea of what all should be included in a report, I would suggest you go through some of these articles which uh, debate on what should be and what should not be included in reports. Thank you for listening.